I'll be perfectly honest and say I hadn't actually figured out that Kimi was until Robin introduced Marion to all three of them. I did think it was pretty cool that he did get to beat up a couple of people at the very end in the big fight with relatively little trouble, as you would expect Little John to be able to do. And also Will Scarlet with the dual knives, real quick killing, I don't know, two or three people. Also really loved Friar Tuck throwing the bees into the, the house or the church or whatever it was with all the French attackers in there and just close the door and let the bees go nuts. Okay, I'm putting this in spoiler section just to be sure, but let's face it, the moment you knew Danny Houston was playing King Richard the Lionheart, we all knew that he was going to be kind of a bastard. Does he ever play anything else? So, Gibson, I hope you don't mind me being smarmy as I act incredibly insensitive about the death of your daughter. No, Jim, I'm your friend. I'm just screwing your wife in a sort of flashback. So, Logan, once you trust me, even though I clearly am behind this whole scheme, I'm gonna screw you over and then shoot you in the face with the most powerful metal known to man, leading to a truly idiotic conclusion. I thought the treatment of the French king was excessively one-sided with him constantly eating, but other than that, I thought this extended its criticism quite nicely with strikes against Richard the Lionhearted kings of that time in general, the Crusades, the church of that time in general, giving examples of stuff that we know happened back then in connection with institutions and people. I'm not yet entirely certain what message to take from it, if any. I guess it could be that when there is an external enemy, we have to join forces and fight them off before we deal with anything else. Or it could be that if we do what I just said, instead of dealing with our internal problems, they might not get solved. It could be that one shouldn't trust the very powerful too much. Or it could be that without democracy, those in charge can more or less do what they want, which is quite accurate. I don't know. If I've missed any message that taken from this movie, feel free to post it. I'd also love to hear opinions on the feminism in the movie. I myself am a feminist, and I know I've made some comments about female actors and the depiction of the female body in some of my reviews. I don't mean for any of my remarks to be sexist, and I am genuinely sorry if I've offended any women with those comments. Anyway, back to the movie. I personally love the thing with her having a knife, and believe that she could have in that time period, and I can imagine that when seeing her in the suit of armor, some might have thought it's King Arthur all over again. As a woman, she most likely wouldn't have been trained as a knight, and the fact that she couldn't defeat Mark Strong on her own, it was a little unfortunate that she had to become the damsel in distress just there for Robin to save her at the end. And I have to admit, I thought it would be her, because, let's face it, what has Godfrey really done to bother Robin? It wasn't him that killed his father. He didn't really have that much of a connection with Sidov's character. And as awesome of a shot as it was, yes, both camera-wise and bow-wise, giving him an arrow through the neck really didn't do anything specifically for his Magna Carta goal. On the other hand, she lost her father to this guy and her husband, I just think it would have made more sense and been more satisfactory maybe if it had been her. With that said, I loved her stabbing that other guy in the neck and not needing rescuing in that scene. Did anybody else get a Kane, as in Command Conquer, the franchise, vibe from that guy, the bald guy with the beard who was going to rape her? Going a little off topic here, but can you imagine actually working for that guy? That has got to be either the greatest workplace in the world or the worst. Can you imagine having to tell him that your department is a little late and, you know, maybe he'll just give you that charismatic stare? I don't know. Does he hold big motivational speeches, nod style? I don't know. What did anybody else think of the visual reference to Saving Private Ryan? And let's not even argue whether or not it is because, okay, I watched the movie once. It's been over a year. And that sequence immediately made me think of it. Let's go over what the sequence contains, shall we? The boats approach the landing and the front part flops down. People run down from it. Once one of the boats knocks over, 
there are several people in the water dying down there. And finally, arrows, or in the case of Saving Private Ryan, bullets fly down into the water. That had to be intentional. Anyway, do you think that it's supposed to be sort of an irony over it? I mean, in this case, we're supposed to root against the invading force. So as my father and I exited the theater, we talked about, is the ending sequel bait, or does it just set up to, after this point, the legend developed? I can kind of see arguments for either. You are lucky that I'm feeling generous, and maybe the horrible continuity on this document that I'm burning will distract you too. Damn. I should wage warn them for 130 years. What is they gonna do? Have some peasant girl who claims that God talks to her defeat us? That would be ridiculous. Oh, and spoilers for season 4. I guess now we know why Kimi killed Alex. She wasn't his size. Those were my thoughts on Robin Hood. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.